Oh, there's another dark horse that we're not talking about. Who? I think you know. But it, Trey? It's only it's only if the Bulls are good, which is still uh, very much up in the air. Levine? Man, I mean, people will laugh, but he's gotten better every single year. Let's start more with the big one. We'll start yes. with MVP and work our way down because... You know, Nikola Jokic won last year, but the field feels pretty wide open this year. I mean, there's just so many top tier guys in the league and you could conceivably make an MVP case for at least like six, seven, eight of them. So who do you have as your preseason MVP pick? It's really tough because, you know, you could point to someone like Giannis Antetokounmpo who would almost always be worthy of the MVP. Mm-hmm. But I just think after him winning the championship, I don't I don't think the regular season is going to matter uh, as much. And, and I think we should preface this again by saying this is a regular season award. I mean, we, you, you just can't try to connect it, connect it to postseason success. So because of that, I, I think Giannis is kind of out on it. I just don't think he cares all that much. And I'm going to make you very, very happy. I Whoa. think this might be Joel Embiid's time. Whoa! Yeah, I think I think it might. So so well. All right. So here's my reasoning. Okay. Okay. Let's say Ben Simmons doesn't report. Yep. Or let's say that Daryl Morey actually moves Ben before this season, and they get in a guy like ACJ McCall or McConnell, for example, someone who's a better fit. I think that's going to help Joel regardless. Like, even if you don't trade Ben and he's not playing, well, that means more touches has to go through Joel Embiid, meaning it's a lot of stats. Like, that's just yeah, yeah. He might average 35 and 17 <laughs> uh, during the early starts of the season. Um, and then when someone else comes in who can really space the floor, that's going to provide him with more spacing. Now, the thing that I am a little bit skeptical about is whether or not the Sixers will have the proper record. Like right. that's because I don't want them to be in that Russell Westbrook situation where what, what was what, what they was were it? six seed I think right something along was it forty six and thirty six or something I don't even remember something along those lines I, I don't think that is good enough so it mm-hmm. really comes down to Philly needing a fifty win season to really pull that off I think but I think ultimately Embiid could have that kind of year that wouldn't shock me whatsoever and if that doesn't happen. I would actually be looking at a Nikola Jokic repeat. That wouldn't shock mm. me. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm actually surprised. He, going into the season, and we're recording this on Saturday, September 25th, to be clear. So in case Ben Simmons gets traded between now and the time that we release this, who knows what that's going to do right. to it beats MVP odds. But right now, uh, Luka is actually the favorite at plus 480. Giannis is second at plus 700, and Bede and KD and Steph are all tied for third at plus 800. Nikola Jokic is eighth on the board at plus 1600. All these odds are coming from FanDuel Sportsbook. And that just feels, yeah, that feels disrespectful. Yeah, it is. That's because it is. I mean, like, without Jamal Murray, more of the scoring load is going to fall on Jokic. More of the playmaking load is going to fall on Jokic. Like, if I'm looking at this board right now in terms of the best values, not necessarily the the person who I think is going to win, but just if I'm putting $10 on someone, I'm trying to maximize return. I'm putting $10 on Nikola Jokic at plus $1,600, and I'm putting $10 on James Harden at plus $2,300. Right. Like, I I just think Jokic, there's no reason to expect him to take a step back from what he did last year. I mean, Michael Porter Jr. is going to assume more of a scoring role as well. But, I mean, we've covered it in the Northwest Division preview. Like, you know, Aaron Gordon or Will Barton is your number three option until Jamal Murray returns. And it doesn't sound like we're going to see much of any of him during the regular season. Like, Jokic is almost going to have to average close to 30 points a game again this year. So I I think he should be higher on the board. I. I like the Embiid pick because, I mean, the guy finished as the MVP runner-up last year. He Mm -hmm. clearly has the talent and the upside to do it. Uh, You covered the the record concern. I think that's fair. Availability is what dinged him last year, and I think we just always have to wonder until he makes it through, you know, doesn't miss 20 games in a season like that. You know, not to say that Jokic didn't deserve it last year because even if Embiid did play, 
every game, you could still make a case for Jokic, but that was what separated them, you know, by like so clearly by the end of the right. season. And I, you know, I think that's, that would make me nervous about betting NBA at plus 800 this year. Um, and the Simmons stuff too. Like we just, until there's a resolution there, I, you're right. Like more will flow through him, but does that cause him to break down more quickly? Does that cause him to overexert himself during the regular exactly. season? Like I, I have, I have a lot of concerns about what the Simmons situation is going to do to him in particular. I hear you on Giannis. I do. Like I, it, we just talked about it in the Central Division pod. Like what you know, how do they approach the regular season? You know, probably similar to what they did last year, where they just kind of experiment and you know keep the minutes low for all these guys. But Giannis won MVP playing 30.4 minutes per game in the 2019-2020 season. So, like, he doesn't need to play 36 minutes to put up. You know, he averaged 29.5 points, 13.6 rebounds, 5.6 assists last year. He finished fourth in the voting behind Jokic, Embiid, and Steph Curry last year. And I think what hurt him, as you said, like, postseason shouldn't factor into the regular season. But I do think what hurt Giannis last year, because... He was putting up comparable numbers to his two MVP seasons was, okay, we've seen this before, but what happens when they get to the playoffs? Like, we're not going to be tricked by this again. Well, they won the championship this last last year. So now I wonder if there is kind of a, a post-title bump for Giannis. And, you know, I'm not going to rule out him substantively continuing to improve in some capacity. So let's say... Giannis all of a sudden goes from, you know, high 60s, low 70s free throw shooter to knocking down close to 80% of his free throws. Given the volume of free throws he draws per game, that's going to be a major upgrade for both him and the Bucks. Or let's say he starts hitting threes at like a mid 30s clip instead of high 20s, low 30s. So I think I, I'm leaning Giannis. It, it, with my preseason pick because I think the narrative that swung against him last year is going to swing back in his favor this year and it's more almost like process of elimination for me like Embiid with the Simmons stuff and the availability that concerns me Luca, you know I, I see why he's a favorite the guy's going to come close to averaging a 30 point triple double again but we talked about you know, how does Jason Kidd impact the Mavericks? Right. Do they have a good enough record? Or is this going to be, or are they going to be the sixth seed? And like, that's, you're going to have to look past that to get there. You know, LeBron, AD, Westbrook are all, LeBron's seventh on the board. AD is 11th. Westbrook is 16th. Are they going to siphon away votes from one another? Same question. Westbrook is 16th? He is 16th tied with Paul George. We yeah. really need to update our stance on <laughs> Russell Westbrook. League-wide. Well, I think it's just trying to take money from Lakers fans, honestly. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, so, in so, which so, case, kudos to FanDuel. <laughs> <laughs> so to your point about Giannis, I don't disagree with any of it. I think for me, it's it's a question of games. Like I, like I said at the, the Central Division preview, I wouldn't be shocked to see the Bucks basically save him for a... A lot of games when mm -hmm. it's just not necessary that he plays. I think they have their eyes on the larger prize. If he misses 25 games this year, just because they're he's being held out, or and when I say 25 games, I also mean him just playing a half. Like right. it's just right. that, that 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 also matters to me. Like if he's just kind of walking around because everyone else got things handled and he doesn't really need to be a big part of it and he plays you know 20 25 minutes in a game like oh that's that's almost like him not playing a full game so i i think this is just a a year where you're not going to utilize him to the same extent as you would a quote-unquote normal mvp mm -hmm. i absolutely agree with you that he is going to get better I absolutely agree with you that in terms of a talent, in terms of overall influence, yeah, probably MVP. But there there are just these usual criteria of, you know, if a guy just misses 10 games, he's mm, the voters like tighten up and go, oh, yeah. can we really justify that? And I, I wouldn't be shocked to see him miss more than that simply because the team is looking at, at larger fish. That's fair. I mean, he missed, it looks like 11 last year and nine the year prior, but... You know, he missed 10 his first MVP season, 9 his second MVP season. Right. So it 
that didn't cost him in either of those. And it, again, it's more like process of elimination for me rather than I feel strongly that Giannis is like well ahead of the pack. Because I don't. I, I mean, I, I think this is going to be going into the season at least. It looks like a pretty wide open race. I'm sure there will be front runners who emerge, you know, at some point of the season. Um, Stephen Curry is the other one that's interesting. At He's plus 800 tied with Embiid and KD. Because that Warriors team, assuming Klay Thompson comes back healthy and stays healthy, they should be better. But they didn't make that big all-in move trading all the kids for a, you know another star. So a lot is still going to ride on Stephen Curry offensively. Like Draymond, yeah. I know they want him to get better and more of a well-rounded threat, but I think Draymond is who he is at this point. Clay, I think they're going to be pretty cautious with him, even if he, you know, whenever he does return, I doubt he's coming back and playing 35 minutes a night right out the gate. December is apparently the word. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there you go. Steph's going to have the first month and a half to continue cooking like he did. I mean, guy averaged almost 13 three-point attempts per game last year and shot 42.1 from deep, led the league in scoring. Um, You know, with this Andrew Wiggins situation, too, Mm -hmm. like... If, if he doesn't get vaccinated and he can't play in half of the Warriors games, that's another piece. They're going to have to lean more on some of these young kids, Kuminga, Moody, uh, James Wiseman, Jordan Poole. And, you know, I think this Warriors team is pretty sick of missing the playoffs. Like, I, I, I don't think they're, you know, they're going to lean heavily on Steph to get back into the playoffs because they know if everyone is healthy at that point. They could be one of those lower seeds that no one wants to draw. So I would keep an eye on him because I think you know, going into the year, I would probably have Giannis, Steph, 1-2 on my board. And KD, it's like I, he's the one where I'm concerned, you know, do they limit him throughout the regular season? I know he looked so great coming off the Achilles last year, but I still feel like you just have to play it cautious, especially after... You know, injuries upended the Nets to the extent that they did in the playoffs. They're also, it's, you know, Kyrie and the vaccine question is very similar to Wiggins and the Warriors. Like, if if Kyrie gets vaccinated, is able to play in all of the Nets games, you can, you know, say, okay, this is a Harden-Kyrie game. KD will we'll either sit you or will play you last minutes, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, so I, I worry that on those teams with three superstars they either distribute minutes or distribute touches to the extent that no one is going to stand out among the crowd um the reason i thought harden's interesting at plus 2300 is just because he is that primary playmaker for the team he has taken over you know Kyrie is like point guard and harden is shooting guard based on like our traditional positional designations but in reality those two flipped and Harden is the main primary ball handler. Kyrie is the off ball guard. So, you know, Harden is going to average 25 and 12 quite with six or seven rebounds. So, you know, the Nets, if they end up like, I'm not saying they're going to be 73 or nine challenge the Warriors from you know the, the KD days. But if they're in the high sixties for wins, it, it's going to be hard not to at least give, one of those guys real consideration here yeah but they're gonna steal votes from each other so i'm not really yeah. worried about a net winning it honestly and it doesn't sound that's not to sound harsh but i just think we've seen that beforehand right yeah, with, yeah, yeah. like with lebron and ad and all that so <clears throat> and now here you have three guys so it really comes down to how voters vote and who they think is the primary guy on that team some will absolutely vote for kd over harden um, some might even vote for Kyrie, potentially, unless, of course, he also doesn't play for half the year. <laughs> right. Guess remains to be seen. The one guy, before we move on, I want to briefly hit on. Damian Lillard, plus 1,200. Seems like a fun dark horse. Just because... Oh, there's another dark horse that we're not talking about. Who? I think you know. But it, Trey? It's, only, it's only if the Bulls are good, which is still oh, very much up in the air. Levine? Man, I mean, people will laugh, but he's gotten better every single year. He was at 27.4 points per game last year, I think, Mm -hmm. and almost five rebounds, five assists. 
if he takes another leap because of the help that he's gotten around him now, if the team got, gets better, if like if they win 50 games, which I think should be the threshold. Like, if, yeah, I really do think. And if they don't get near that, which look, that might be a reality, then he shouldn't win. But if they do, and he's putting up crazy efficiency once again on and on high volume, why shouldn't he be someone you could bring up in that discussion? Not saying he'll win. I don't think he'll finish in the top five. Yeah, but but like. Just in terms of consideration, I wouldn't be shocked if his name pops in there. He is a plus 7,000 right now behind yeah. Julius Randle, Carly Anthony Towns, Jimmy Butler, all plus 6,500. He's, uh, no way, so he's behind Julius Randle? He is. That's ridiculous. You got to give me that one. That yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. 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 And behind Sabonis, behind John ja Morant, which I, I love John ja Morant, and I think what? he's going to have a great year, but. At Levine should be higher than John Moran. All right. See, this is what I'm saying when I'm saying that the national media and even now betting companies apparently are sleeping on Zach, yeah. as, as like just in terms of his evolution over the years. Like this is this is ridiculous. Well, and the Bulls in general. Like I, I th- John Moran, I think is going to have an awesome season. As, right. You know, totally. All Star caliber player. I don't think the Grizzlies are going to be good enough for him to merit MVP conversation or consideration. Whereas. If everything right. breaks right for the Bulls, I could at least see that. Although, you know, this Patrick Williams news is not a great start for them. Um, right. No, yeah, yeah, like the list the list ha- for, for Levine to be in the conversation ha- is super long of things that has to go exactly right. Right. So, right. <laughs> like, the odds aren't, aren't major. I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. The only reason I brought up Dame is because, you know, after – I feel like <laughs> after the offseason that he had – if this is his last year in Portland, he's going out guns blazing. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe he doesn't win MVP because they might not be good enough. But uh, let me see if they they have odds on. They must on highest score. Ah, yeah. He's fourth behind Beal, Curry, and Doncic. That, that's where I would bet. Damian Lillard plus 900 to lead the league in scoring. Yeah, that's not a bad bet. 